king. And more amazing still is that that redeemer, Emmanuel, would come for rotten old Ahaz as well as you and me. Ahaz didn't deserve it, and neither do we. For a scripture tells us, even while we were sinners, God sent us his son. And today, as we heard in the gospel reading, we celebrate the day it all came to pass, some 700 years after that promise was made to Ahaz. That miraculous birth recorded in scripture is a basic tenet of Christian theology, that Jesus was conceived without sin by the Holy Spirit of God. His mother was just a regular human being chosen by God, but his father was God himself. The doctrine of the virgin birth is fundamental to everything we believe as Christians. And yet, would, would you believe that many Christians doubt it ever happened? Couldn't have happened, they say. It's ridiculous to think so. Why? Because it's humanly impossible for anyone to give birth without another human, a man, being involved. Well, duh. Of course it's impossible. But, you know, the, the weird thing is they accept that God created the heavens and the earth. They accept that Jesus performed all of the other miracles recorded in scriptures. They even accept that he was raised from the dead. But for some reason, the miracle of the virgin birth is a stumbling block for them. So let's suppose they're right. Let's suppose it never happened. So we'll just excise that section of Isaiah chapter 7, which, by the way, is what Thomas Jefferson did. Did you know that? Jefferson cut out every miraculous event recorded in Scripture, and that's his Bible right there, by the way. And he cut those out because, according to human reason, such things weren't possible, which left him with a pretty thin Bible in which Jesus appears as merely some sort of teacher, but a little more. So we'll cut that part out. But then we must also eliminate that section of the Gospel of Matthew, which speaks of the fulfillment of that promise, which means we also have to eliminate similar passages in the, the first chapter of Luke as well, including Luke 137, where the angel tells Mary that nothing will be impossible with God. We must consider all such passages as entirely unreliable because if God can't cause a virgin to conceive, he can't do any other miracle either. And if we eliminate those passages, we must, like Jefferson, eliminate, eliminate all those passages that speak of miraculous events, such as God creating the universe in seven days which the secular world has already rejected anyway. And of course, every miracle Jesus did must be expunged from the Bible as well, including his resurrection from the dead. And if that's not true, if as St. Paul says, Jesus has not been raised from the dead, then we of all people are most to be pitied. In fact, as Christians, our entire way of life is pointless. Prayer, worship, all of it. We're just wasting our time. If Jesus hasn't been raised, we should be out there living it up, making merry, sucking all of the marrow out of life that we can, because this life is all there is. So eat, drink, and be merry, friends, for tomorrow we die. Oh, and death. Yeah, there's, there's nothing but eternal non-existence in death which means that there's absolutely no point to life at all. So what then is Christmas all about? What are we doing here? Well, that's pretty depressing, isn't it? I bet you didn't expect to hear that kind of sermon on Christmas Eve. <laughs> well, don't worry, because I'm not going to leave you there, but, it, but I suppose you probably already knew that. So then let's 
consider the opposite. Let's take scripture at its word that sometime during the final years of Herod the Great's reign, a young girl named Mary of the village of Nazareth was truly visited by the angel Gabriel, just as the gospel reports. Let us accept that she conceived a child, not of man, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. Then Mary carried the Son of God in her womb for nine months and gave birth to that son in the little town of Bethlehem, just as the scriptures said it would be. And by the way, Luke, the physician who wrote his gospel, checked all of this stuff out. He went and interviewed all of the principal figures that he could before he wrote his account, which included Mary. Now we know that because Luke has info, like Mary's song, The Magnificat, that no other gospel reports, info that he could only have gotten from Mary herself. And if we accept that miracle as true, then we can certainly accept the others as true as well. I mean, if God can make a woman who had never been with a man conceive a child 700 years after he gave us that promise, well, then he can do anything, can't he? Which means that creating the world in seven days would have been easily within his power. And so would every miracle that Jesus performed. Turning water into wine, nothing to it. Stilling a raging sea, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Raising Lazarus from the dead, no more trouble than baking bread. The resurrection of Jesus three days after his crucifixion, no trouble at all. Knowing then that a virgin conceived and bore a child by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can certainly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that every promise he has made to us is true. So what does that look like for you and me? It means that every one of your sins have been forgiven through Jesus' suffering and death on a cross. Those sins are gone forever. Jesus doesn't remember them, and neither should you, so let them go. It means that we have a hope that the unbelieving world does not have. So it is they who are most to be pitied, not us. Because Jesus tells us that he who is baptized and believes shall be saved. In fact, he tells us that we who belong to him have already passed over from death to life. It means that every one of your loved ones who have died in the faith with Jesus are with Jesus right now. Do you get that? They're alive, and you will absolutely see them again. And it means that Jesus is truly our Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, we will see him as he truly is in heaven. But in the meantime, he's not left us alone. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he is with us right now. In fact, he dwells within your very being so that Jesus is as near to you as your own heart, which means that when we pray, Jesus hears us. It means that when we read or hear the word of God in scripture, we are hearing God's own voice. It means that in this sacrament, the Lord truly is present in his body and blood, strengthening us for every trial we will face throughout this holiday, in the coming months, and even into the new year. So friends, it isn't just the birth of Jesus that we celebrate tonight. It's the totality of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Because Jesus isn't merely up there in heaven looking down. He is present right here with us today and every day. For Jesus is indeed our Emmanuel, now and forevermore. Amen.